Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Holiday Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, be sure to come back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details. I'll provide links to the stories I'm talking about today, links to the resources I'm covering, and links to the publications as well. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. So for today's tip, I was wondering what to do right before Christmas uh, for a tip, and then suddenly all these publications were coming out with uh, the big story here, the huge DNA code of the Christmas tree being revealed. And another one was um, simple Christmas tree, very complex genome. So it was funny to me to see the mainstream press getting all excited about tree genomes. Uh, and I thought, well, there's the tip of the week. Let's look at one of the resources that I've been intending to do for a long time but hadn't covered yet. That includes Pine RepSeq, which is one of the features that we see here. And this is one of these projects that's contributing to the assessment of tree genomes. And so one of the publications actually linked to Pine RefSeq, I was delighted to see. They, you can learn a lot more about the projects that are going on here. And you can see who's involved with these projects. But I would like to focus on the main resource. So this is just one of them. This Pine RefSeq is just one of the, one of the contributing groups. Um, there's actually a great project called Tree Genes that I would like to highlight. And you can get to that from the Pine RefSeq page here. So at the top navigation, if you click Tree Genes, you'll go to that resource. And here you find a forest tree genome database. So this has been around for a while and I've been intending to highlight it but it just happened to work out this week and it was perfect timing. So here we have the tree genes site. There's so much going on at the tree genes site and there's a publication that they produced a couple of years ago that goes into more detail on it. But what you can see is what they've got is all this kind of information that will help you to understand the projects that are going on in this field, access the data that's being that's being generated by these different teams. You can find literature associated with this and you can find uh, folks who are working on these projects too. So if you're interested in these types of projects, you have access to all of this from this terrific Tree Genes site. And if you look over on the side, the navigation gives you a lot of access to these, uh, these features as well. You can click on this diagram to navigate around, but you can also go from the navigation here. So there are sequencing resources that are, are organized for you. You can find those folks who are working in this field. Species databases, literature database, transcriptome, protein, expression, diversity, and uh, mapping, and genome browsers, and so on. And so what I'll be focusing on is this um, GBrowse portal that they have here. But you can see there's a tremendous amount of information from a number of different strategies that are coming into this tree gene site that might be useful for you. I'll be focusing on this um, genome transcriptome browser GBrowse portal just because I like to highlight how often people are using GBrowse for their specific projects. There's a lot of different genome projects that are generating data now and they don't always make it into the um, mainstream browsers right away so some of these sequences come out in these um, terrific sites with their lo own local GBrowses and that's what we see here. Here you can see that if you click the GBrowse portal link you have access to a number of different installations of GBrowse that bring you to data on these different species that are available right now and they'll be more available over time. I'll just click the top one, the Pinus here, click that GBrowse, and that offers me a couple of different collections of data. I'll pick the Clemson one just, just to highlight that one. You can come back and look at the other one as well. And so what you would find here is a typical GBrowse installation that offers you a tremendous amount of information about this genome and the other types of data that are being generated and analyzed from that data. And as you can see with a typical GBrowse, you have a lot of different tracks of data. You have exon sequences, coding sequences, and um, other types of data that are available for you here. You can select the tracks to turn on or off at any time. And you can add your own tracks as well. If you have data that you wanted to compare, you can use the regular GBrowse features to um, upload the custom tracks and compare that in the context of the existing tracks as well. Let me just go back to the main site again. Here again you could go to other species and sometimes you can go to different groups that are doing different assemblies on these. And there's other types of data that you might be interested in as well. You might be interested in the transcriptome data. I would encourage you to have a look at Tree Genes. It's a terrific resource that brings a lot of data from these forest genome projects together to give you access to all the kinds of data that you might need if you're interested in learning more about any of these species. So check it out, Tree Genes. Thanks very much for your time, and happy holidays.